Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 55 of the Hookup on Music. And my name is Tony, and I am your host here at the Hookup on Music. And we have a lot to cover tonight, and I'm glad to be spending this time with you on this very, very special Saturday episode. So please, 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 please hit the like and subscribe. And um, I hope you enjoy what we are doing down here at The Hookup because, well, you know what? We love doing it and we love sharing music and we love when you share music with us. That is our slogan. Please, please, please share music with us and we will continuously share what we hear. And honestly, had a lot of great conversations out on the social media sites this week and we're going to continue to do that um but let's get started on well a little bit of some sad news this week we lost somebody that to me is is just somebody who who i had a chance to meet and um his name is donald kinsey okay you may not be familiar with him but he is very very awesome because well number one um he is one of three sons of Big Daddy Kinsey, a Chicago blues performer, if you're really familiar with the blues. He was also a member of the Kinsey Report, which was a band in which he formed in 1984 with his brothers, Ralph and Kenny Kinsey, and um, definitely really, really, really awesome. Um, he had toured with everyone from Albert King, but uh, Roy Buchanan, um, but where, where I like to think that I got to a little bit be like, wow, he played with both Bob Marley and one Peter Tosh. And you're saying, wow, that's that's really awesome. And and he well, let's look at this video of him performing with one Bob Marley. So awesome to see somebody from right around in the area, a.k.a. Gary, Indiana, be able to play with such heavy hitters as Bob and Peter Tosh and the Whalers as a whole. Um, he also was involved in some some many, many different things that you would say, uh, well, you wouldn't want to be a part of. Um, in 1976, days before the Smile Jamaica concert, which was supposed to be this concert to bring um, two factions of, of, of political groups together um, in Jamaica, Bob Marley was uh, assass attempted to be assassinated at his home. Um, it took place during a rehearsal while the band was jamming, okay? Um, Kinsey was a member of the band at this time, and he had just exited the rehearsal and was standing close by Marley and the manager, Don Taylor. And, um, well, he was able to block himself by a heavy road case um, and shield himself and was not struck. Um, and two days later, not only did Bob Marley, who was shot in this, in this attempt, um, perform, but so did Donald Kinsey. So to see such a man be a part of something so huge and so important. And um, I luckily got a chance to meet Donald Kinsey and he was as equally as awesome just being in his presence and, and hearing some of these stories one-on-one. -on -one. It wasn't like I was just in a room and he was telling a bunch of people, nope, it was just me standing there. And it was really, 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 really awesome. Um, it's sad when we lose someone like Donald Kinsey, but this show is also used as a beacon to kind of showcase some awesomeness on some players. And Donald Kinsey is definitely one that uh, needs to be shined on. And, you know, go back and take a look. I was reading earlier about um, his playing days with Peter Tosh and uh, how he talked Peter Tosh into doing an amazing cover of Johnny Be Good. Uh, if you do have an opportunity, check that out. And uh, check out everything Donald Kinsey did. A real, real sadness that we lost him, um, because, well, w when you're when you're when you meet somebody that is really awesome in the um, what's the word I'm, in the music world, and then he passes light, um, you know, w we really, really want to honor him and continue to talk about him and talk about really just a lot of the greatness in which he's been. Um, you know, just kind of really all around, just a really, really, really awesome player. But uh, yes, check that out. And also, sadly, this week we lost Toby Keith, 
Okay, I haven't sat back and listened to a whole lot of Toby Keith, but one thing I do know about Toby Keith is that he spent time with Willie Nelson, and I do enjoy Willie Nelson's music quite a lot. And, um, well, if Willie Nelson was willing to give his talents a shout-out, I would say here at The Hookup, we are good enough to do the same. Um, Maybe I will go back and listen to some of Toby Keith. But, again, it's sad that he passed. And uh, we are, um, rest in peace, Toby, and rest in peace, Donald. Um, that being said, what are what are we been listening to? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? What, we're always listening to good stuff down here at The Hookup, and, and we always want to share it with you. And um, this week, there's been a lot, a lot, a lot of different stuff that has dropped, and um, we're going to to go through a couple of them um the last dinner party okay just this last week finally dropped their album prelude to ecstasy okay um, a 41 minute affair released on island records produced by james ford um already heard nothing matters in center but now that we have a whole album of 12 tracks um there's 10 more for us to dig into and listen to and really kind of uh hear abigail lizzie georgia aurora and emily at work and they go to work on this album um a, a lot of you know there isn't any super long songs 457 being the longest there's uh you know and 129 being the shortest on the album but it's worth the time it's worth the effort it's cool to see the work that they put in to get this album out we've been talking about it here at the hookup uh, quite a lot and uh well you know it was cool to finally see it be released because well it needing to be released was what everybody was really, really, really waiting for. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad we, we, we got that release. Also recently, I've been going back and digging into a band that uh, I don't know how often a lot of you out there listen to, but they're a band called the cult. And they started in 1983 um, in Bradford, England, an English band. And um, Ian Asbury has been involved with a lot of different things. Um, you know, originally they were around from 83 to 95 and then 95 to 2002. And they've been together ever since 2006. And they just honestly, they, they put out really, really good work, work that n- needs to be um, dug into. Okay. They've already come out with 11 studio albums from 84 to 2022. Um, but uh, digging into some of their stuff, it, it, it's 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 it, it's really awesome. I've been digging into their second album, okay, called Love, and uh, there's a really 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 good track on there. If you get an opportunity, please go ahead and dig into because what we want you to always do is get the vibes that maybe sometimes we see in some of these songs. And and this this album is is really really good, and and this song really really brings it. You know, go into YouTube and check out that album. Go ahead and cue it up and listen to it. A lot, a lot of good stuff all the way through it. Um, you definitely have probably heard She Sells Sanctuary. That was the very first single off of this and probably the most well-known of all of them. But the guitar, the guitar in some of these songs really, 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 um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, kind of, I think it sticks out. You know, um, Ian Asbury is really a really good singer who you could hear a lot of different influences while in his playing, um, but just all around good band that I think needs to be checked out on. And uh, they're again doing really, 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 really good stuff and stuff that needs to be looked at into deeper. And, uh, you know, and Please, please check out The Cult. Really, really good band. Because if you can and they do come to town, you'll be be lucky to see them in the club. And you get really close and hear those guitars really, 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 really loud. So do that for us. And, uh, well, from here we've got, well, something that I've really been excited for 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 quite, 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 quite some time. And you may say, well, what have you been excited for? Well, it is Tool, okay? And it's not just Tool the band because we've talked about Tool the band before. 
but it is their 1996 album, Enema. Okay, a great, great, great album that was released in September of that year, September 17th to be exact. Um, produced by David Bottrell, okay. David Bottrell, okay, has produced lots of different things. He had produced, um, he had production credits on some Peter Gabriel work, including So, King Crimson. So when Tool comes along, they go in there, they, they, they involve him, and they're, they're, they're excited because, you know what? Tool wants to get the guy who produces some of the stuff that they really, really, really enjoy. And it sounds like he does really, 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 really good work, so they bring him in. He's a Canadian producer. He has won three Grammys. Um, just really, really, really good sound on the album. Just before we even get into the album, it is a very, very, very excellently produced album. I don't think um, if the production was different, the album might might be stale in, in effect of what you are looking for when you're looking for a classic album or a great album. And when which tools enema is exactly that. It is a great classic album, an album where you can just dig your feet into from the beginning to the end. And um, we're going to kind of go through that here today because, well, you know, it's a combination of words, okay? It is, I've always said it's enema, but it's an enema. It's, it's, it's two words combined. It's the Latin for soul with the ideas of a life force and a term used often by psychologist Carl Jung. And enema, well, the political procedure involving the injections of fluid from your bottom end. So uh, it's a little mixture of both. It's not just enema. It's like en anima. It's, 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 it's a mixture of words, okay? And <clears throat> the themes within this album, just 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 dig, 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 dig um, through everything from Timothy Leary and magic and religious themes. The album is dedicated to one of my personal favorite comedians, Bill Hicks. Um, who, honestly, this is my introduction to Bill Hicks, which is awesome because later when I dig into Bill Hicks, I don't really realize that that's exactly who this was, even though it said it in there. Um, it, you know, it, it really let us know who who he was. And, well, you know, we just kind of sat back and and we were we were curious and the album just just takes us to there, you know, the curious level. I remember perfectly buying the album for the very, very first time and just having the cover the way it was in the in the the cool uh hologram type of type of pla um CD case just really cool and in the back the front you could take out the uh insert of the booklet and you can kind of uh just do and move it into different ways to see the coolness on with that uh, hologram cover um it's crazy because again a lot of these songs have speculation where a lot of the times the band does not come out and really say, hey, you know, this is what the song is about. It is left up to you, the listener, to say, hey, you know what? This is what this is about. This is what they are, are trying to get through to me. And it is my job as the listener to go ahead and see, well, you know what? They are bringing me to this place that I want to go. And Tool does a great job with that. And Enema. Enema is an excellent example of, of a band really moving forward from album to album. Really big fan of Undertow, the album that came before this. But Enema is just a little bit, I think, step in a in a more bigger of a growth um, progression. Okay. And I think that's where, you know, you see on this album, it is their, their first time with bassist Justin Chancellor, who came from a band um, called Peach. Um, and he replaced original bass player uh, Paul D'Amour, you know, which is kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you know, I can imagine that he was a little bit upset, but he's currently in ministry and he's playing on their album. So it seems like everybody kind of makes out a little bit ahead. Um, one thing into the album as we go is the album is, is, is divided by a lot of short seg segues. Now you're saying to yourself, oh, a lot of filler, you know, this is filler, you know, because there's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's seven of these. You're saying, well, seven? But the album is 77 minutes long, 
the album is a journey um, through through time, which took three years since Undertow to make. Three years to make since Undertow. So having an album that is just such a such a integral part is just just really 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 cool. Um, the artwork again. Um, it was nominated for Gram for best record packaging. Um, shocked it did not win. Um, the pressings of the album, um, it, it was like a, a multi-image CD case. It was something that I have not seen quite a lot since then. Um, in there, there were a lot of different effects, as stated. Bill Hicks is in there. You know, there is a um, a smoke box with animated smoke and encompassing eye, which you can put into this thing and move you have a contortionist you have the band sitting on a couch um just a lot of different things and for somebody you know who at the time this album's coming out is 14 years old it's pretty big it's pretty big to me it's pretty big to well my friends and honestly um you know we, we dive right into the music you know the album kicks off with this track called stink fest um very, 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 very um, different type of song lyrics. Okay, everything from drug addiction to to well, just different kind of things that well, you just wouldn't really want to well say on a show like this. You'd want to just go ahead and listen and take deep into what those what that would mean to you, and um, not let that spoil. But that was the first track to get released. And it often got retract it referred to as track number one because of the title of the song Stink Fest. Um, you know, a lot of people just called it song number one when it was on the radio, and quite a song number one it was. Um it's what's the word? The song is actually um about a lot of people thought that, but the song Keenan states is actually uh dealing with a friend of drummer Danny Carey who isn't afraid of getting his hands dirty rather than write off that that term. So Tool is always about looking a little bit deeper than just saying, oh, this is a sexual term and let's just go ahead and say this. Everything's a little bit deeper. And as we continue to go through the album, you're going to kind of see some of that, just kind of how deep it is. But the music video, wow, stop motion animation. It was directed by the band's guitarist, Adam Jones, who directs uh, the majority of their work and um just really cool because i also remember we we last week talked a little bit about uh well a little bit of this and a little bit of that and we may have mentioned about 120 minutes and uh matt pinfield okay i remember the introduction of this video on there and uh just really, 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 um, to me, an inspirational video. It received lots of heavy rotation. And again, um, if you're a fan of the show, yeah, you could deem this to be highly, highly something that really kind of kickstart just what we we are doing here. Um, track two, Eulogy. Um, another really, 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 really good song. Another one that really, really is portrayed in all aspects of the band. If you're happening to listen or you're just happening to watch, if you happen to catch Tool during this time and see them, they would have played the song, Eulogy. And if you're familiar with what a eulogy, it is something that you read when, unfortunately, we lose somebody or somebody passes away. So kind of a little bit earlier, try to give a little bit of a eulogy to the great Donald Kinsey. But the song itself, the lyrics are, are deep, 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 deep. Um, are you going to be surprised when you hear your own eulogy? Just really cool, um, you know, lyrics to that. Um, but that being said, the band at this time is just really, um, you know, um, what's the word I'm going to say? They're just really looking to, uh, I'm sorry, did I mess the lyrics up a little bit? Why then are you so prized when you hear your own eulogy? Get a little couple of words here. I want to make sure I get it right so no one's like, <laughs> but like I said, again, if you caught them during this time, they were really, really, really great live. I happened to catch them on the last touring um, Lollapalooza, Lollapalooza 97. Um, hopefully, soon we can get a guest that 
well, maybe I've been there too. We're going to hopefully see. But that being said, the band, again, top of their game, bringing Justin Chancellor in, Danny Carey's drums. I'll never forget seeing them live and watching them play eulogy and watching just that drum set go. Um, Track 3H, awesome, 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 awesome um, vibe to this song. Um, Just really, 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 really cool. Again, a lot of people say that there are some, uh, what are the meanings to this song? This one... um, this one is a little bit could be mistaken for different things. Um, H is about making decisions and having to make a decision yourself. So you're going to have to want to make the right decision. And that's kind of what H preaches. And uh, well, a great song like the ending of H quite a lot. Um, it was again, it was a single for the band. Okay. It was the second single. Okay. So again, um, third track, second single, uh, Useful Idiot comes in, and that's our first um, interlude. That's 38 seconds. And then 46 and 2 comes in with just an amazing, amazing bass, bass line. Just really, really good. Um, just really, really, it's mostly in 4-4 time with some of the sections being in 7-8. Uh, Danny Carey plays four minutes of 7-8 on his ride cymbal over the rest of the band playing 4-4, and they meet up on the downbeat of the fifth measure of 4-4. If you are not familiar with that, take a listen to the song. Um, during a <clears throat> particular quad fill, the drums are in 3-8, the guitars are played one measure of 9-8, followed by a 1-8-5-8, all while the bass keeps in a 7-8. It's crazy because that's what a lot of tool is, is they're working in different time signatures, and they're just working to make the songs better and in enema i feel anima they feel like they do the job and they do the job pretty pretty well um the song is pretty much uh just oh i don't know um there's a shadow okay if you're listening to a call young is supposedly a big influence onto the track um numbers very very important in life and tool does a good job with that message to Harry Manback, 153, another interlude. Number seven, Hooker with a Penis, a really, 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 really heavy track on the album that I think, if you've listened to it, it is nothing like the title of the song. It is about selling out, so don't sell out. Uh, track eight, they give you an intermission. Who needs an intermission? Um, but I, we did here because this album is so good. Jimmy, great, great song. Awesome song. Cannot be skipped over enough that you need to go and listen to Jimmy. Another interlude. Um, Die Eerie Von Satan. The Eggs of Satan. Crazy, crazy song at 217. Not really a song. Just a really crazy interlude. At 11, we come to my favorite song, Push It. A song that really, really, really makes you, the listener, look deeper into what is going on within oneself into, well, different type of uh, situations and scenarios. Um, enema, uh, Cesar Subability is another, um, some ability is another, um, what's that called? Uh, interlude. We're having a lot of interludes. Like I said, six are in this album, but again, it doesn't keep, it doesn't, what's the word I'm looking for? Let the album lose any, um, any steam. Um, Enema, track 13, the title cut, another great, great, great album released with another great, great, great video, Stop Like Motion, again, directed by Adam Jones. Um, Art cam design uh, with art design by Cam DeLeon, very awesome to have this, another great, great track, 639. Um, A lot of it is about, well, kind of, uh, well, are we going to fall into the ocean or parts, are we, are we losing different things uh check that track out if you have not we go into ions which is just a great 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 uh interlude that is just four minutes long and it's leading you into a 13 minute finale of third eye which has the bill hicks at the beginning using some of his great great quotes to explain well different parts of the human psyche that we may not want to sometimes look at herself and examine, which is why what made Bill Hicks humorous. Um, Tools Enema is just another great, great, great album that 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 digs into um, 
different different thought processes. Recently, we've talked about uh, Allison Chains and Tool. I do hear some Allison Chains. Um, I hear a lot of different, different, different things. Um, guitar tech on the album, Billy Howard Al, will go on with lead singer Maynard James Keenum to uh, do a perfect circle, which I heard is getting really back and, and getting work done. But what I want you to do tonight is please, 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 please take a listen to Enema again. If it has been a long time, Tools Masterpiece, it is great. It is good. Um, if you ever get a chance, check them out live. Go back onto the internet and check out some of those live performances like the one you just heard a little while ago or saw. They really, 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 really put on a great, great, great show. Um, concerts are being released. Um, one coming up right around the corner is Incubus coming to town performing Morning View in its entirety. Uh, Incubus was another band who, for us here at The Hookup, was a band that we listened to quite a lot. Um, and not starting with Morning View or um, the album before this, um, you, we've been um, on to them for, for quite, 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 quite some time. Um, just really, really good stuff um, before even Make Yourself. We started with Science in 1997, but then went back and listened to Fungus Among Us. But Morning View, coming to town and playing this album, it's a good, really good album. Um, to me, it was the last album that I think I really, really, really dug into a lot, even though I've gone back now since I've seen them live recently and seen what they've been up to. And they do have good tracks on all of their albums. But the last track, Aqueous Transmission. If you've never checked this track out, please do it. It will calm you. It is over seven minutes. But there are our heavier heart rocking moments onto this that I think that um, people will enjoy. And playing with a band like Coheed and Cambria, I think uh, is really just cool. And it seems like it's going to be a good, good show all over the place. So if it is or where you happen to be coming to town, please, 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 please check it out because I think it's going to be a good one. Um, we're going to share here just really quick here an album before we roll out an album by Jay Giles Band, an album that I think we need to, to, to talk about, a vinyl, a, a good release. <laughs> Real big fan of that song. Let's give it to me. Buy that big jamming band, big jamming album. Ain't nothing but a house party. Back to get you. Really Southside Shuffle. All, 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 all over. Make up your mind. Strut with my baby. Really, really, really good. Um, as you saw there, or if you have never saw the album cover or Bloodshot by the Jails Giles Band, please, please, please check it out and go in and look deeper into it. Um, if you can stare at that cover all day long because of just, well, the awesome things in which they are wearing. And of course, their awesome, amazing hairstyles. But again, it's a great, great vinyl and one that I think you and everybody else out there should dig into. Um, like all the other vinyls, you know, what vinyls have you been listening to? Okay, recently I was out at the store and I uh, saw a vinyl of the Midnight Cowboy soundtrack. A great, great, great movie with, well, Harry Nielsen is on the soundtrack and it's a good record. So you don't know when you're out there and you're looking for vinyls, just really, 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 what can you purchase? And again, the Illinois Entertainer is really, really good. They talk here on the very new cover here of Alkaline Trio, who has a new album that just came out. We're going to dig into that, and we're going to share that with you coming up on a future, future episode. But these are great because you could go ahead and look through them, and they could tell you, well, different things coming to town to Reggie's. Um, they could tell you different things coming to, well, all the places. So you could just open one of these up, and you could find them. They got the Milwaukee Metal Fest coming to town. Mr. Bungle, huge, huge fan of Mr. Bungle over here down at the hookup. But thank you, thank you, everybody, so much for joining us tonight. Um, thank you for letting us honor the great Donald Kinsey. Um, thank you for letting us talk the amazing tool. Thank you for amazing us. Let us dig into some some really, really, really good jams, you know, because that's why we're doing it. Um, check out all the other awesome stuff here on the Sadistic Penguin Studios YouTube channel. We've got drafts. Really awesome drafts. We got, folks, if you haven't seen it yet, please check out At The Show. It is a passion project of ours, talking movies, 
come on down. We will be talking about a musical gem coming up right around the corner, La Bamba. Um, just such a great movie, such a great time. Um, go to the website, sadisticpenguinstudios.com, and check out all the good writing. Until next time, everybody, we really, really enjoy having you. My name is Tony, okay? This is the hookup on music. And until next time, I want you guys to keep rocking and keep rolling, and we will keep supplying you with the goodies, the grooves, the all the around good jams. Take care, everybody. See you next week.